So this window is, um, this is, was originally in a, in a sash that was this big. And because it's going into a larger opening, we're creating an, a, um, we're enlarging the window by creating a large border area around it of different kinds of glass. So the, um, the other windows have a glass called glue chip incorporated, and this has a, this has a different texture glass. The glue chip glass is a, it's a traditional glass that was learned how to make it in the 1890s. And we get it in big sheets like this, and we cut it into smaller pieces. In this case, we strip cut the glass to make, to make strips, which we're then going to use to fill in the, the areas. And we made a, this is a different texture glass that's been used for the far border. What I'm going to be doing here is cutting, and I've, I have made about three quarters of this window completed, and I'm going to be moving through it and finishing off the last pieces. So what I do is I have strips of, the strips of lead come in six foot strips like this. They're six feet long, and we cut them down to create pieces that are the size of the, that we need and have the angles that we need so that they come together. And when we solder them, they're going to, they're going to completely come together and have no gaps in them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to cut pieces and install them and cut pieces of glass to size to, to finish off the window. Okay, so what we've done is, we've, is Emily has drawn a, a, the, the layout here and it has pencil lines where I'm going to be cutting the glass and inserting the leads. So what I've done here is I've taken one of my long strips and I've set it down in place and I'm now using a marker to mark exactly where I'm going to make my cut. It's a little dot. And then I take it out and I come over to here and I use the glass cutter to cut through the dot. and remove it. Now this is one way of making a window. Another way of doing a window like this would be to make an individual pattern for each piece. So I would, we would lay out with pattern paper, which is a heavy manila stock, and then draw the entire window on the stock and then cut out each pattern with a pair of special scissors that leave a little gap in between. If we did that, and that's how, that, that's how the middle would have been done because that has many, many pieces and it would be very hard to hand cut them without doing that. But in this case, because all the pieces are going to be the same on the outside, like this piece is, should be identical to this piece so that these squares end up identical. So what I'm doing is I'm gauge cutting, or I'm, I've gauge cut the strips to get them all the same width. I'm cutting each piece to, by hand to get it to the exact length that I want it. And then I use just one pattern, like this pattern here, to cut a triangle out of two of the corners of each piece, or of one or two of the corners, in order to, so that when those four pieces come together, they will form a perfect diamond that will accommodate that little bevel piece. So just like that. And that's how you cut glass. So the next, the next stage is that we have to make, this piece here has to be cut, over here has to be cut to length. And the, it, it has to be cut to the exact length that will meet with these two pieces. So what I've done here is I've cut a 45 degree angle. I'm going to set that in place and where that point touches the lead is exactly where I'm going to make my cut. So I now make a, I make a score line with my lead knife. I take this piece out that's now got a mark on it and I go over to our little saw. I then use the little saw. To cut the piece exactly to length. put it in place. Then I take a piece of, of lead that's going to become one of these um, side pieces and it has two cuts in it. It has a 45 degree angle and it has another 45 degree angle. And I know from, from having done the rest of this window pretty much exactly where I have to cut it to get that. So I cut the, I make a second cut to get that piece to get it to look like that, set it in place, and now it, 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 that corner exactly touches the 
corner of that piece of lead. So when I put the, when I put the second piece in, it's going to all come together and, and when it's soldered over and you can't see those, those cut lines anymore, it's going to look like a single piece of lead that makes it, that makes it Y. And you want that, you want it to look like that so that it looks like, so that it looks continuous and it doesn't look like, like there's any, like there's two discontinuous or three discontinuous pieces of lead coming together that don't quite line up. So together. try to blend it together. So having put, having now made that, that end, I do this end by cutting, by, by making a mark along this line because that's where I want that to end up. And then I go back to the saw. Now that piece fits in there exactly right. So the, the, as I do this all day long, you get, you, you, get some, you get into a rhythm doing it, and then you're able to eventually do it at speed. So now when that piece goes in, it lines up correctly. You build it as you go. Each piece becomes interlocked. So you, if you have to take something apart that's in the very middle, with to do it right, you have to take the window apart from the edge to get to that piece. And then when you're done, you have to put it back together again and reassemble it. So, large having a break in the middle of a large window can be very difficult and expensive to replace. Having a break on the click, if a, if a border piece were to break, that would be not so that would be not such a big deal because you could take the window and just remove that outer piece of lead, replace that one piece, and put it back in. So yes, I'd have to I have to get to the piece by taking it apart from the from the um, outside in. The things that you do, and I don't I have you only see it over here, is that I have I have pegs that are holding it so the pieces can't shift around. If I was assembling the center, I might have 20 or 30 pegs just holding individual pieces in place while while I and then you move them as you go. And, and it keeps the window, for instance, if you were, you wouldn't want to jostle the window and knock everything out of alignment because then you would have to dismantle it all and put it back together to make sure that everything was, that there was nothing out of the, out of the lead. So I now have those. I now have those four pieces in there, and I inserted my bevel. So I then move on to the next piece. It was very dirty. A lot of dirt came off. It cleaned up really nicely. I was happy to see that, especially the the border. A lot of the time there'll be, and this was no exception, the the border will have gotten paint on it over the years, and the dirt when the, when the rainwater lands on the window, it goes down and it accumulates and it dries on the bottom border. So sometimes that will st actually stain the glass in a way that can't, that's irre irreparable. But in this case, it all you know we were you were fortunate, and all of that crud and dirt came off pretty easily. All right, so I'm now ready to cut the next piece here. I'm going to get my, um, my piece of, uh, my strip of glass. And in order to get the right length, I have to take out that bevel that I just put in.
So what I'm doing there is I'm it's called scraping the glass, and there, when you cut a piece of glass, there's a razor sharp edge on it. But if you take a piece of glass and scrape it along the edge, that glass, that sh razor sharp edge comes off. This is true of all glass, so now I can run my hands over the edge all day long and I won't cut myself. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show here is what we call tucking the lid. And if pieces of lead come together like this, one abutting the other, and you put solder, and then the solder acts as a bridge, and it, it sort of glues them together by melting and forming a pool of molten metal on top, which then hardens and, and glues it together. But you, it's possible to make the window a lot stronger. And the way you do that is that you take the ends of the pieces and you tuck them into the lead so that they, when the solder is put on, it's sort of it, it's it, the met one is inside of the one end is inside of the other, and it makes a much much stronger joint. And here's how we do that. I'm going to start with the straight edge here. Now over here, this piece of lead, I have, when I, when I made it, I cut a little notch in the end and it looks like this. I made a little V and I then pinched the end down. And that was anticipating that that is going to be inserted into another piece of lead like this. So now that, that I've done that to that joint, I now come over here and I use this sophisticated specialized tool called a Sharpie to um, open up the lead a little bit. So that bends pretty easy. That bends really easy. Yeah, the lead is very easy to bend. It's very flexible. Like here's a piece of lead that can just bend like that. Oh, wow. And it's, um, that's, that's lead. It's very, very soft. Now you obviously I didn't bend it very well there, but if you were bending curves, you, you, there's ways to get it to bend smoothly. So in this case, I now, I now pick up this lead a little bit and I, and I push that into place. And then I use, a piece of, I use a piece of block, once again, sophisticated tool. This is a Jenga block. And I tap it into place and I can then press it down. And now this piece of lead is tucked into that piece of lead. And when I go to solder it, it will, it will be much stronger. And you do that when you can for a window. You can't always do it. It would be too difficult to do it for these um, these joints. But for these, they're all tucked in. When they and they look a little bit wonky. They look a little bit uneven. But when the window is finished and soldered, you'll see that they and cemented. You'll see that they they look great. They look like they call that basket weaving because it looks like a like fabric, like like uh, threads in a fabric that go in over and under each other. And so that's a that's a, a nice method to strengthen the window and give it some make it look really nice visually as well. So now that I've, I've got that ready, this piece fits right in. Fits like a glove. And I'm going to lock it into place. Like so. And at this point, I would then repeat the process. I've just, I've just put in these two pieces and I've, I've gotten to the next group of pieces. And so I would start by doing the same thing I did before, which is to take a, a piece of lead that's cut at a, at a 45 degree angle, and then use that to make a mark on this piece of lead and cut it to length, and then continue with the next group of, the next group of pieces. Okay, so this is our cementing room. We keep, a plastic, we keep a plastic up because it creates, it creates dust and fumes. And so when you're in, process, in the process of cementing, so we have the plastic walls and we have, a, we have the ability to put a fan in the window and draw air out. So when you assemble a window, you have pieces of lead and glass, but you don't have um, an airtight seal. The, they're loosely put together and air could, and water could flow around them and you would, your room would quickly get cold. So what we do is in order to make the window completely sealed and airtight and a lot stronger is we do what's called cementing. And we make, the way that works is that what Vicky is doing is she's stirring up the bucket of cement, and the cement is it's made of linseed oil, turpentine, and whiting. It's a traditional formula that's been, that goes back hundreds of years. And whiting is just chalk dust, or it's uh, limestone powder. So she's mixing that up, and what, we, what you do is you, you put the window down on the bench, and you pour the cement onto the window, and then you use a brush 
like a um, this type of scrub brush to push the push the cement under the lead and then let it clean it off and let it cure. And when it cures, it will harden up and it'll form like a rubber-like gasket that will last for many decades. And that will seal the window, waterproof it, and put a lot of strength into it. So in this case, when we wanted, these windows are gonna just go back into their original frames. But in order to, in order to sort of, it's sort of a preventive 12 month process, multi-decade, you do this about every 40 or 50 years, but it's sort of like a preventive maintenance on the window that strengthens it up. And that, over time, the cement dries out, the linseed oil dries out and it turns into powder. And so you end up with powder flaking down and it doesn't look very good. This makes the window essentially look like it did when it was first, when it was first built. It cleans the window, it, it gets rid of any loose powder and it, and it, re, um, it, it re-strengthens the window. We've done one side of this window. The other side is, so you can see on this side, it, it, part of the process of it depend, is that it, the, the leads are all very consistent. Where it's been soldered, it's a little lighter. That's normal. I'm gonna flip the window over to show you that on the other side here, the beveled side, we haven't cemented it. It's got, it's got a different look. It's a lot shinier, but there's also corrosion around the edges of the lead. And there's also paint that's around the edges here. That this paint has been softened up by by soaking the window in a detergent. And when the window is cemented, that's going to all break up and come off. This is going to be the corrosion is going to be cleaned up, and the and the any any anomalies in the window are going to be taken care of. If you if you, I don't know if you can focus in, but you can see that there are some little bits of um, cement that have come through, little bits of. Um, bleed through and that means that there was a there was a gap and the gap is now filled and we're going to do the same thing to this side as the other side and it'll it'll essentially make the window look like it like it looked when it was brand new this is the replica window this was this is made with all new glass we had the the bevels were made by a bevel maker they were all hand made on a on a grinding wheel with a and hand polished the this ripple glass is a modern reproduction of this vintage ripple glass. One of the a Kokomo glass company had a calling, they, someone had a lot, had a project where they needed to reproduce this and it hasn't been made in decades. And they commissioned making a glass roller to reproduce this texture. And because of that, now the stained glass restoration world has access to this texture. You can buy sheets of it and that's what we used here. It's indistinguishable from the original. Um, the including the color too, it just came out. It's so there's. You would be hard pressed to find a difference between this. The only difference that I can really see is that in the reflected light, I see a, just a just a little bit of difference in the color. This is a little more greenish amber, and this is a little more blue. But that's because of the glass, the thick glass that was used, and the fact that when glass is that thick, even tiny, tiny amounts of iron or other impurities can slightly affect the color. But other than that, this is the, you'll be, when, this, when these are next to each other in the light with the memorial window in the middle, you'll, be, you'll ask people which is the original and which is the reproduction and it, no one will be able to tell you.